everybody, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kids. Um, just as a bit of a notice thing, I have got a cold so you'll have to excuse me. Um, my voice may not sound totally normal because I'm a bit bunged up. Um, but I really, really wanted to do this video because it's something that I'm honoured to be part of and really excited to do. So if you don't know, and I'm sure you do know her because her channel is amazing, Erin um, over at Simple Art for Adults, um, she has come up with this tag called June Juxtaposition, but in short it's June Jux, so June and then J-U-X, and um, it was a hashtag designed to promote the fact, uh, you know, how far you've um, come in your colouring journey. So you know, from your start to your end, and I don't have Instagram or Facebook, but you can show one of your first pictures to one of your last, and I think it's a great idea, because some people, you know, say, oh, I wish I could do this, but then actually, you know, you can see how far you've come, and then you may be able to do it in the future, and I think it's just a great idea, um, and yeah, I'm really excited to, to show you. So she also wanted us to do YouTube videos and um, so this is my uh, rendition of this tag and Becky at Becky's Colorscape has also done one. Um, so I'm just yeah excited to show you. I'll be showing you more obviously than two pictures because I want it to be more of a, a video. So yeah, let's just jump in. So back in December 2014, I got Secret Garden. Now this was the first time that I had coloured and obviously because I'm 14 I coloured as a kid all the time anyway um, but you know I didn't really class it as colouring because I hadn't really taken up the hobby properly I was just colouring as a kid so this was basically one of the first pages I ever coloured and I think for most people it was because we all had this idea that when we got a new book we would start from the beginning and that was me um, so this was my first well one of my first pictures and for this I had a 36 set of WH Smith pencils which I still have and I had a 24 set of Faber Castell classics <clears throat> sorry I have the 60 set now, uh, which I use often, but I just want you to notice here, I didn't have pastel, um, or I didn't use it for this, and I'm not sure if you can see, but I just rubbed the pencil in the background to make a background, which didn't really work, but I thought it was kind of, kind of cool. These, it doesn't even look as if I co I've coloured them in, but I've, I have used very light colours for that. But I, you know, there are so many things that I would change in this, but I'm not going to. I mean, I don't really colour in this book anyway, The Secret Garden, but even if I did, I wouldn't change it because it just shows how far I have come. Take a look at this blending here that I attempted to do. You, you can see it's just, it's just lines, and it makes me happy to see that I have improved, and yeah, and that, you know... I'm not, I'm not going to change it, I'm going to leave it as it is. But yeah, that was one of the first things I did. And a book that I got before it, I think, so this is actually going maybe around about the same time, but a bit before, was Animal Kingdom. And I think Animal Kingdom and Secret Garden were kind of the main books that people started off with. Um, and I started colouring in this octopus which I never finished this was top model pencils so there's this thing that many many kids are into and it's where you get um, these books that have people in them and you create their um, their outfits you colour them in you add stickers and things like that and I bought the pencils to go with it and I actually used them for quite a bit of my colouring uh, it was a 24 set and they were about £9 and they're actually really decent, they're not bad at all and I think this was WH Smith pencils and those so as you can see I didn't finish it because it's a huge double page spread and in those days I just didn't finish a page um, but yeah you can see that what I did and then I thought it would be a cool idea to do outlining and gel pen over here 
and yeah it didn't <laughs> it didn't work um but yeah that again this book I don't colour in but I'm going to keep it as it is because I'm proud of how far I've come so this one uh, again was a dragon just a plain dragonfly with top model pencils this was before Secret Garden and this was the early stages where I was pressing down harder and getting lighter and the really really early um, stages of shading you can see here with these purple lines I'm gradually getting lighter and it, it's just it's just you know just quite cool to to come back on things you know I might if I had done this now I probably would have added a background but yeah there's that one again I didn't finish this one but this was the budgie and this is when I was really getting into um, creating rainbow effects and you can see that he's very very bright colours and uh, yeah I'm not really I would never do this colour palette now but I think it was quite fun to see how my inner self at that time would, would colour things I'm just going to kind of go through these. This was with Stabilo pens. This was very, very early. Um, and just, just plain pen. And I do not use pens in my books anymore. Might use the occasional, yeah, so gel pen or maybe fine liner or something like that. But I really, I, I don't use them. That's just my personal preference. Uh, they didn't actually bleed through. Well, they're kind of shadowed. Didn't bleed through. But I, I just have fun with that. And um, it's quite mindless. Didn't really know what I was doing, but yeah. And here, um, even though they're quite thick and these were tiny areas, I used Sharpie for um, this page that I never finished. And there was some bleeding, but that was to be expected. I think it was actually a mix of Stabilo. So this brown here was Stabilo. And then the um, alcohol marker. You can see the yellow, black pink and peach and green were definitely sharpie um, but it was uh, I, I think I not got the palette from somewhere but I think I saw this somewhere um, just the colour palette and I decided it would be quite cool to do so yeah that was that one Enchanted Forest again was one of my early books but this was when I was really um, enjoying it uh, as a kid I think I got it in 2015 so you can see that this is really just 24 Faber-Castell classics and colour it was just the 24 classics at this point and I did this one and I've recently I got a second copy but it's very scribbly that page uh, here kind of got a rainbow theme going on because I only had 24 Again here, that was actually my mum. Uh, I think I was doing the pink and the green at that time. Um, but And again, pen, which I don't use. And you can see how they're not really made for colouring books because they feather everywhere and don't give a smooth lay down. Um, this was kind of shaded. This was Stabilo pencils, 24 Stabilo pencils. And I think this was maybe 2016. Um, but it's really just just quite basic. This was my 36 set of WH Smith pencils with fine liner. And I use uh, test it, this for tester pages quite a lot now, now that I have a second copy. And I've got a few examples in her other books as well, and I'm not going to go through all of them just because some of them aren't very significant. But if I find this, I, so I think I got this Christmas 2015. This was the uh, this was when I was testing out using baby oil. I, I tested this one using baby oil. It actually kind of worked. But this was my early shading, still with my budget pencils. Um, and this one again, WH Smith pencils and fine liners. I'm actually happy with this jellyfish, but you can see I had the rainbow theme going on, which I wouldn't do now. Um, and again with the rainbow theme, I think 
this was all just pencil, not really much shading, but you can see I was switching between pencils. I don't know how I did this, to be honest, because there's just so many, so many fish. But yeah, that's that one. Um, and just a couple to show you. This was the first one, again with WH Smith pencils, that I did uh, which was just basic lay down of colour not really any shading the only thing I was doing was either pressing really light or pressing dark and I wasn't um, shading so this was early and this was a tutorial this was the stage where I found colour tube tutorials and I was trying to do them for myself of course I didn't have any of the colours and I found it quite difficult to do because I didn't I didn't really have any corresponding colours so this was a Chris Chang tutorial as you can see, I didn't finish it, but that was to be that was to be expected at this time. At this time, I literally didn't complete anything. It was rare if you saw a page finish from me. Um, and here, this again was the start of a tutorial by Chris Cheng. You can see this was actually a kind of test with blending, getting lighter, and things like that, which I think works. It's just I didn't stick with it. Um, but yeah, there's that one. And this is just a test book now, so I've got a second copy. Then I I dove into the work of um, Lizzie Mary Cullen. So detailed for me at that time, and I was really intimidated by it. Um, but there was one page that I did do, and this was with watercolour, so it wasn't technically colouring. Um, but this was at the time where I was seeing Peter Hewitt's tutorials, and I wanted to try watercolour in these books. And this was WH Smith watercolour that my mum had, um, which is actually really decent, it's it's great. Um, I tend to use gouache quite a lot now, so I don't use, I mean I don't use gouache in my colouring books, but I I just, use, I prefer to use gouache now, but um, I, do, I do quite like how this came out, and it didn't take very long either, which was quite nice, but not really the sort of thing I was into. Um, and then... I did get Magical Journey and I'm more happy with the results than this. This was the main picture that I did and uh, this was when I had stickles so this was probably mm, early 2017 and um, this was all those top model pencils and the WH Smith pencils and as you can see I literally only put the tiniest bit of stickles on. And I don't really use stickles in my colouring books. It's just my personal preference. I think that it gives off quite a bumpy effect and it's hard for me to colour on the opposing page. So I, I don't. Uh, but I use it for card making instead. Um, but you can see I think overall it was quite a nice effect of all of the fruits. It took me a while. I took my time with it. This was when I also had a Prismacolor blender. So I was using that. But yeah. I, I do quite like this page. Has this just gone down? Sorry, the light just went down then. Okay. We then come to the early times of 2017. And this was... Actually... No, this is afterwards. Let me show you, let me show you one before. This is afterwards. So this one was April 2017. I got this book at the same time as I got my 72 Prisma Colours. So Romantic Country Second Tale was the first Romantic Country I got and I completed a page on the exact same day uh, which was the Easter page. Probably quite a few of you have seen this one now. You've probably seen all of the other pages before but um, you can see that it's been two years and I can see lots of things that I would have done differently but at that time I was like oh my god now I can colour properly with these and actually you can colour properly or you know to a to a lovely standard with really really cheap pencils so you know I was a bit naive then but um, I, I'm actually happy with the result and I have got a second copy of this book now because lots of these pages I really want to do again or I didn't finish and I'm unhappy with the result so for me, as a first time with crystal colours, I don't think it's too bad. Um, 
I didn't have a problem with wax bloom really which was good but I just I wish that I had been more thoughtful about a colour palette but obviously at that time 72 brand new pencils you're gonna try practically all of them out aren't you because that's that's what that's what you do with a new set of pencils so yeah um, I do I do quite like that and at least I've got that as a memory you know this is what I coloured two years ago this was kind of so the the Anamorphia page was kind of May June of 2017 um, so this was a little bit after and the main page that I want to show you is a page that I started we were looking at our new house which was May and this was those top model pencils again um, this was when I was blending and things like that uh, we can see that I've got the darker purpley blue going into the light blue um, the green and the pink the blue and the pink these flowers so this was kind of the beginning of shading and then we have again another one that I started the phoenix I think or, or a bird and uh, again I was kind of practicing with shading it was the same pencils it was just fun obviously I didn't finish it um, but it was it was just fun for me and then because I had obviously seen other people watercolouring in this I thought I should watercolour in it too it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to I ended up using a, a base of WH Smith and then adding loads of pencil and you can't really tell that I've added loads of pencil but yeah uh, I'm definitely going with more now and do more with this page but it's a nice it all of these pages are kind of a nice reminder of what I did um, and then Coming into the most recent pages, which are basically two years on from that. Um, actually, no, well, that's not true. Then, between November 2017 and November 2018, is that right? Yeah, so between then, I completed Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, as many of you all know. And this was really when... I thought my colouring was at a good enough standard that I would be able to colour in this well, you know, not rush it, not just do random stuff with it. This was when I had pretty much got a good a good set of prismas. I had 132. I had built up my polychromis. I had a few other small sets and things like that. So I I did have a good amount and um, it was really just lovely to do and I think this is when my colouring transferred from being okay to a standard that I was proud of and pleased with so you know it's just it's great to see how my colourings developed over the the year of colouring this the first page I did was the um, was Ivy in the boat, and the last page I did was this one. So I think you can see the difference in kind of the depth of the colour, my my decisions on where I put gel pen and not, and um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with with this book over that course of the year. And obviously one of the most recent pages that I've done, which many of you will have seen, and kind of just, I don't know, showcases everything that I've learned, um, is the, the nameplate page. So you can see that here I have tried to be realistic with the butterfly. I'm learning new techniques about colouring flowers adding a little background shading you know for me this is one of my favorite pages and I'm really really happy with it so 
I'll just leave that there. So this would be, you know, one of my most recent pages. And I'm not going to show any more because I feel like you've seen quite a lot of the past ones. But you've also seen lots of the future ones from recently kind of pictures and things like that. So I just wanted to say again, thank you Erin for, you know, letting me do this. Um, inviting me to be one of the first people to make a video about this. Um, I think June Jux is such a great idea. Um, <clears throat> and it will make people feel better about themselves with, with their colouring and everything. So I, with that in mind, I have a few people that I would like to tag. Um, so the idea is that we colour, we, we tag to other people so that we can carry on this chain. And I have so, so many people that I, that I could tag and I know it's going to to carry on it's it's just going to escalate but let me just write them down um sorry just give me a minute there's so many people i could do but uh, let me just So the two people that I have picked are Honour Your Crafts and Happy Colourist J. And the reason I picked these two ladies is because they started their channels very close to when I did. And I think it will be great to see what they have done. Because obviously they have been colouring at different um, time scales than I have. Um, and I know obviously J won't be having many videos up at the moment but that's okay because you know whenever whenever you guys have time to do the videos uh, I'd love to see them I wish I could have tagged so many other people um, but you know it's going to go in a chain anyway so I'm really sorry to people who um, I wasn't able to tag you are able to do it on the colouring connection on the Facebook page I'm can't, I'm not um, do that because I don't have Facebook but you can also do it there if you just want to do a first picture you coloured and the last picture also just as a side mention please go check Erin um, out if you haven't at Simple Art for Adults that's her Facebook page The Colouring Connection she will be doing a giveaway on there with anyone who enters this so if you don't want to do a video and you do just want to post go ahead she's also doing a giveaway on her channel uh, for June Jux so I think it's for Etsy gift cards so please um, check that out um, she mentioned this in her live stream too that she did recently and I'm just so happy to be a part of it so thank you so much Erin and I hope that we can carry this forward and lots of other people will enjoy sharing what they have done so I want to thank you for watching this please feel free to comment down below and I will see you in the next video guys bye